So we're talking about in bed today, but not with Madonna. We're talking about in bed and Israeli drama. Um, I read on Wikipedia, I think it was, that it was a comedy drama. No comedy in this, though, Sean Vickers. Comedy is the hardest no harm. Have you watched the wrong film? <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to tell us about it? What's it about? <sighs> yeah, OK. I'm going to start trying to centre myself. <laughs> It follows, it initially sort of all the story of Guy and Joy. Um, Joy is Guy's best friend, and they are off to Gay Pride in Tel Aviv, and they're full of the joys of spring. And during, you know, the, the big celebration, there's a shooting, an absolutely deadly shooting. And Guy and Joy run back to their apartment, and as they're running back to their apartment, they find a guy uh, sat on their stairs who has taken a lot of drugs and is not in a good place. And so they invite him into their apartment to try and get him sorted out. And there begins what is probably 72 hours, 48, 72 hours of intensity across all three characters involving sex. And, well, chem sex, basically, sex and yeah. drugs. I was going to uh, say, yeah, there's a lot of drugs in this film. In, in fact, yeah. at one point I thought, okay, if this is going to be all the way through it, this is going to be a bit off-putting for me because I, I can't think of anything more boring, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not being prudish. I'm not. It's just oh, I don't want to see people taking drugs throughout a whole 90-minute film. But there you go. Some people might like that. Some people might be but into that. Over here, you've got drugs over here, and then you've got a lot of paranoia. Yeah. Actually, that's a very good point because normally with this kind of film, like especially if it's quite an intense, dark drama, it starts obviously with that shooting, which could be triggering for some, but also could be really upsetting for some people that have the, those kind of connections, you know, where they've had some similar experiences. But I haven't so much, but I still found that quite hard hitting at the beginning. So you've got that right at the very start, which does set a precedent. I think, but also the fact that it's in that home, it's in your home or what potentially could be your home, which I guess is kind of home invasion-esque. So that's quite unnerving as well. But you've got someone in the house yeah. that you don't want to be there. Yeah, but the thing about the whole setting, which is pride, drugs, a very tight friendship, a stranger coming in, and then the ebb and flow of all of those drugs. So real highs real lows, moments of like I need to be on my own, moments of like I need other people. The directors walked kind of walked us through that. So they try to describe all those moments and when it's really low and really sinister and there's levels of paranoia and their characters are like hyped up versus moments of calm versus, you know, there's a lot happening versus like calling a dealer again. Like it, it's falling into that. So there is a real kind of, it builds anxiety and it, it, it is awkward and it really is based around these three characters that I've described um, I don't know I, I found it a bit of a tough, tough watch to be honest I think the music helps certainly because the music's got that driving energy because it's often Nissim as a Israeli DJ producer yeah, I was who, say it's often who did that and like you can tell very early yeah. on, you're like oh incredible soundtrack it, very energetic very upbeat very uplifting which does kind of counterbalance that kind of darkness that we're watching so in a way it's an enjoyable watch it sounds quite bizarre to say that i enjoyed watching it but it is a tough watch definitely a tough watch i mean there's a lot of a lot of really dark moments and a lot of um sinister moments yeah because that soundtrack is fueling it because yeah. like you know they hit they hit guy and joy hit the streets and it's full on so like you get yeah. a full house experience because they are out and then the way the often it seems then plays with that all the way through because the soundtrack is there at all times, like in any kind of afters. Yeah, I felt like I was at fire in Vauxhall. It was like, whoo, like 10 years ago. Because <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. often if it, not often it seems done um, Madonna. He's done a lot of remixes for Madonna. Yeah, very circuit, very, but very uplifting circuit. It's no. quite melodic stuff. So it's, so it's a good yeah. soundtrack. You know, you follow the story of these three characters and then you realise how tightly wound or not they are. And I think this is something that you often experience. I think about my days clubbing, which was a long, long time ago. But you think about the acquaintances... <laughs> Hang on a minute, you were at King's Arms this weekend and you look quite fueled. That's a pub. <laughs> That's a pub. 
But I mean like clubbing, clubbing. I think about the the friends that you make on the club scene and then you think about what fuels that friendship. And I think you get a bit of that with Guy and Joy, which is they're tight because they experience a lot together in yeah. very intense circumstances. But actually, as the drugs wear off, you kind of see the gaps in their relationship. You kind of see that it's not a fully formed relationship. It's actually it's actually a single string. They do a lot of drugs together and they party together. And because of that, they love each other. But actually when that stops, you see the gaps in their relationship. Uh, yeah, you friend. see the cracks appearing, don't you? Certainly. It's certainly not as rosy as it appears. And I guess no. that's a reflection, like you say, of the, of the drugs, because obviously the drugs wear off. I'm not saying that their relationship was based on drugs, but obviously there were connections because they both enjoyed that. So it was interesting. I mean, it can, you know, a lot of people can kind of relate to that. And, you know, it, there's no judgment on my side. You know, I'm saying I didn't want to watch a 90 minute film just people taking drugs just because i've been there and i've kind of like been bored by that whole conversation around that but it wasn't it wasn't all about that that but that was quite an important part of the story yeah i, th I think my i don't want to use the word criticism i think there's a way of looking at the three characters going through a weekend like that of highs and lows that doesn't have to have such kind of finite and dramatic outcomes so I think you can still play with the idea of a weekend of chemsex, and there's been some key documentaries about it, that doesn't have to end with things that are so brutal and finite. And, I, and that was a bit where I was a bit like, yeah, but every chemsex weekend doesn't end like this. Guy, at the end, like, people party every weekend. It's It can get twisted, it can get messy. This is an outcome that could happen, but it's quite an extreme outcome. Yeah, definitely. And so it really depends. For me, this is just my observation, it really depends how you play with that. And so you could have amped up even more the paranoia and the anxiety in that flat without having the outcome for some of the characters. But that's my own personal view, right? Do you think so, in that sense it felt like a film that you'd seen before? Because there were parts of it that reminded me of Victoria that was based in oh, Berlin. Yeah. Have you seen that? That's amazing, that film. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well... It's a good. It's a good comparison, actually, Phil. I think. Hmm, I don't think it's as good as Victoria, but I think it definitely reminded me of the mood. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, it, it's it's my, it was my personal take on it because I, it's how I felt as the movie went on. I was like, I'm just not sure whether I'm totally into this movie, and I don't know. I can't put my finger on the reasons why. And then I found the ending a bit like, okay. I, I kind of think I get it, but also not. If you Do know you think I mean. that ending might divide people? Possibly. I, I just... All over the world, every weekend, there are chemsex parties and afters. And sh things happen. So there's also a... These, are, this, this kind of thing is happening all the time. There's also a bit of... Things are really horrible during this whole thing. Things are turned really horrible. But it doesn't mean something has to be fatal do you know what i did think watching this though i i, I got distracted by something about three quarters of the way in and normally for me to be well i was distracted but i think it was a phone going off or a text or something and normally if a film was boring me i would have stopped the film and like it's almost like a good book that you can't put down and that that's how i felt with this with the, I, I felt that with this was that I wanted to keep on watching because it, it did intrigue me and I wanted to see how it was going to end and how it played out. And I think for that, I think it's obviously done something right. An enjoyable watch is, is difficult. I, I I wouldn't so much say it was an no. I guess it was to a certain point, but there's a lot not to enjoy as well. But I, I, I did want to finish it, which is a good thing. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a journey. It's a narrative that's been put together. It has a start, a middle and an end. I get it. Uh, did you believe I the just, characters? I did. I believed Guy and I believed Joy. I'm really not sure whether I believed the stranger. There was a lot going on with that. They, they put a lot into that character. You know, at one point he's saying, oh yeah, I commit hate crimes. Oh yeah, I've got a girlfriend. Oh yeah, I've never had anal sex. Oh yeah, I was like, geez, this man's got the shopping list. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they've really piled it onto this character, haven't they? So like, that's where I was a bit like, he was. I felt in some ways, Guy enjoying their friendship was 
well-rounded. It's like clubbing relationships that you've seen till the end of time, right? You know, but that the stranger I had, a, I don't know whether he landed for me. And then he, it all got overly sinister where I was like, this could turn into a slasher film. The mood became swung so much. I was like, is this going to turn into a weird horror? Like maybe that's maybe I, that's why I was so fascinated. Maybe that's why I was so in, uh, you know wanting to see what happened at the end because it it did kind of feel you're right. It felt like it was going to go go there. Somewhere no spoilers because I'm not saying whether it did I or not. Me holding the reins of that weekend without it having to go to something almost a different genre of movie. Yeah, yeah. for me, it would have changed my rating. Well, that's um, why I mentioned I, the home, inven- yeah. home invasion element because there are loads of horror films that do play on that home invasion mm. thing, which is terrifying. You know, people being held captive, all that kind of thing. Straight strangers in your home, and you know that is that really does tap into the fear that a lot of people have about the comfort of their home. You know, the home comforts that you don't want, you don't want sinister people in your home that you think are something that they're not, kind of thing. So. Mm. Yeah, I think it did that well. It did. It did feel tense to me. Hey, I finished it. I just say you can't. I can't really say I enjoyed it. I thought it was. I thought it was. Put, I thought it was an interesting thing to put together. I don't think it was my cup of tea. But views are entirely my own. Okay, so verdict then. I'm guessing you're going to be lower than me. I think so. Star rating. I'm between a two and a three. And I think I'm a two. Yeah, I thought you probably were going to say two, to be honest. It's a three for me. It's it's a solid three. Because that's what we're doing now, aren't we? We're not just doing threes, fours. We're doing solids. <laughs> <laughs> it's, mine's like a top, top end two. <laughs> not not a flappy bottom two. <laughs> not a flappy bottom two. It's a... <laughs> Delve the rock hard to be given the context of this film. But yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think people should watch it and take their own takeaways from it. For me, that's how I personally felt. But I know that people will probably watch it and go, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's subjective. And for me, it just didn't land right. Fair enough. So it's called In Bed. I've got a funny feeling it's not actually available to watch just yet. We might have an upfront preview. I'm sure people have seen it at some festivals, but yeah uh we'll leave all the details down below of where you can see it thank you as always for watching we are boys on film i'm phil and that is sean and we've got plenty more in the can for the next few weeks so make sure you subscribe i might do a cha-cha-cha routine i think i'm ready for a cha-cha-cha routine. you need to do rafaela cara which one is it rafaela cara which one do it do it again do it again <laughs> yes I really love the Italian I love, I love the original Italian version of Do It Do It Again. Brilliant. Um, very major. We'll save that for next time. Next time.